As we've been talking about hope, I just am filled this morning with the hope presented by our confirmands from their words and their movement and their prayers. It is a beautiful feeling. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. My dad got a speeding ticket on the day of my baptism. We were uncharacteristically running late, and my dad pushed way past the speed limit to get us to church on time. The entire situation was surprising, given that one, my dad is a very, very prompt person. And two, he's also an extremely safe driver. He had me convinced for years that a car literally can't start unless every single person has their seatbelt on. I'm not going to tell you when I learned that that's not true because it's a little embarrassing. Now, not only did my dad get a speeding ticket on the day of my baptism, he got pulled over in the church parking lot. One of the pastors who was making her way into the building at that moment turned around to yell, Peter Lucia, in front of God and the congregation. He was very embarrassed. Now, luckily, my dad's speeding ticket was not the only thing that happened in front of God and the congregation on that day. I did not have a confirmation service because I did not grow up in a UCC church. But my baptism, actually my second baptism, but that's a story for another time, <laughs> my second baptism happened around the same age as today's confirmands, Noah, Liberty, and Sean Jr., it was indeed a day where I stood before God and before the congregation and declared my faith, as our young people will do today. Confirmation is part of our United Church of Christ heritage and denomination. Today marks the conclusion of a year-long process of learning and conversation. Confirmation classes covered topics like the Bible, Jesus' ministry, the Trinity creation, God's love, God's judgment, God's gifts of peace, justice, and eternal life, church history, just to name a few of the things we've been talking about over the last year. So today is a day to celebrate this learning and to affirm our confirmands as they declare their faith. However, today is not an end point. Confirmands, while today is a ritual and a conclusion of sorts, it is at the same time just one moment in a lifelong process of faith. We are all called to a personal journey, one that started before this day and one that will continue long after we leave this place. I felt that the text from Hebrews 11 was fitting for today's celebration and for our congregation's continued exploration of hope. For it ties faith and hope together. Verse 1 
A well-known verse says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The first thing this tells us is that faith is assurance, or in Greek, hypostasis. This word can also be translated as confidence or substance. This means that faith gives substance to our hopes. It gives them a foundation. It makes them real. Our hope, you see, is neither fleeting nor flimsy. It is something that we can stand on. I think of the words to the hymn. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Anyone else know it? <laughs> I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Our hope is indeed a solid rock. And this doesn't mean that we get everything we want or everything we wish. Nor does it mean that all of our hopes will be fulfilled in our lifetime. But it does mean that the things that we hope for, peace, especially on this morning, given all that is happening in the world, justice, love, companionship, purpose, those things are real. They're real, and they're real to God, and they're worthy of our attention. Faith is the substance of our hopes, and that first verse also tells us that faith is conviction. The Greek here, elenghos, it means proof or evidence. Faith, we're told, offers us proof of things we cannot see. I think here of the metaphor of a compass. A compass points north, south, east, and west. And it can help guide us, right? Now, I can travel west. I can go in a westward direction. But I can't get to west. I can get to California or... Hawaii, but I'll never end up at a single point called West. Similarly, we can't see all that is grace, or we can't see all that is forgiveness. We can't see all that is love. There's not a single place we can point to and say, look, there, that's, that's it. <laughs> But we can see those things in action, right? We can see their impacts. Just like a compass, faith gives us proof that these intangible things, they do exist. And it gives us eyes to see them in action. Which takes us right to verse 2. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. Hebrews 11 goes on to list a number of examples. Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Rahab, Samson. The author of Hebrews is saying, if we look to our ancestors, if we look to our community, we'll see some proof we'll see some evidence in their faithful actions. But it's not only 
this list of our biblical ancestors, right? We can see proof in our own community. By faith, there are people in this room, virtual room and literal room, who pursue their passions. By faith, there are people in this room, virtual and literal, who have faced severe illness. By faith, moderators like Richard and Ingrid and Mary and India have led this congregation. By faith, Alice Mulberry read scripture and worship for decades, even when it became challenging to do so. And I know I'm not the only one that misses hearing her voice. Although I know that she joins us faithfully still. By faith, Jean Krell attended worship almost every single Sunday. And every time I look right there, I think of him. By faith, Sean and LaShawn Bryant, you became parents. And they shared some of their testimony with me, saying, our journey as parents has been guided by nothing but faith. When we first became parents, we had no idea this journey would be so unpredictable, so frightening, so transforming, and so full of devotion. Faith is what enables us to love hard, trust our intuition, and listen to ourselves and our children. Faith is what keeps us united but distinctly different. Faith has helped us pour into our children the things we missed as children ourselves. Faith is always better paired with love. Faith is, by definition, the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And what is constant in our home is that we have faith in the love we have for each other. Who would have known over 20 years ago, Sean and I would have taken our love and faith in each other and manifested it into our own trio of amazing people. Our whole operation is held together by faith and love. And by faith, the Charles family also helped me write my sermon and shared the following. We would claim that faith's presence is more like a mother's gentle, reassuring pat on one's shoulder, or her hand that carefully frees a stubborn strand of hair out of her child's face. It is subtle but present, not loud but can be heard. Even when no words of confirming love are uttered, we intuitively know that we are loved and cared for. Continues, the presence of faith in a person's life must not necessarily proclaim itself in eye-opening moments that resulted in a completely changed track of life. Faith can also manifest itself in small, beautiful moments. Your young daughter pointing out that the homeless man under the metro track needs a sandwich, a cookie, and some apple slices. And preparing those items together, that's an assertion of faith. The cashier who looks curiously at the selection of groceries and kindly asks if you can share the recipe that calls for all of that. That's a sign of faith. The woman whose shopping bags are almost too heavy to carry and who is overwhelmed with joy when helped across the street. A sign of faith. Or the young woman who gives extra chicken to Noah because it's the end of the day and she assumes he must be hungry. So she gives him extra protein and a big smile. A beautiful gift and a sign of faith. 
plucking those many moments from our memory as a collective effort, makes the realization crystal clear that there is hope as there are all these small moments that let us continue to have faith and allow it to further grow and develop. By faith, these words were shared with me. And by faith, each one of you, Liberty, Sean Jr., and Noah, you have already done such incredible things. <laughs> In the process of confirmation classes, I feel like I learned <laughs> as much as I taught. And we're so excited to see all that is yet to come. Now finally, verse 3 of our scripture says, By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen is made from the things that are not visible. Confirmands and congregation, there are many things people can visibly see in you. Some important, some less so. People can see your achievements, your actions. People can see the clothes you wear, the things you own. Remember that many of the most important things, the most life-giving, world-building things are those that are unseen the love of friends and family, dedication to your interests and your passions, gratitude, kindness towards others, critical thinking, creativity, God's grace. We may not always be able to point directly at these things, but these unseen qualities are part of each and every one of us, and they are part of God. My prayer on this day is that each of you and all of us here remember that faith is a gift from God. And like many of God's good gifts, faith is not only something that we receive, it is something that we do and that we practice and that we put into action. May we remember that faith is indeed the substance of our hopes and the proof of unseen realities. And may we remember that we can always turn to our community and to the great cloud of witnesses for a reminder of all that faith has done and is doing and will do. Amen. Jesus, no turning back, no turning back.